Hey everybody, welcome to a bit of an odd how to fail video because this one actually requires some explanation. So what you're seeing here is the uh, logon utility for a game called Shattered Light. It was developed by Catware Inc. and published by Simon & Schuster Interactive, released in 1999. And if the name Catware sounds familiar to you, it's because they made two other things of note. One of them was Star General, published by SSI. It's a sort of space strategy game. It is on GOG if you're interested. Um, I have not played it myself yet, but it seems to have been pretty well received and pretty well liked. Just one of those more niche strategy games. But anyway, the other thing they made that more people might be aware of is the Swords of Zine expansion for Might and Magic 4 and 5. They actually started that off as a fan production, and it was eventually picked up as a proper expansion that was included in the uh, Might and Magic collection that I included it. And of course, Swords of Zine is available in the Might and Magic 6-pack. Uh, it's on GOG, and I think they actually put that on Steam as well. But anyway, uh, point is, they made the, the main thing that they made of note was the Might and Magic Swords of Zine expansion. This was their final game. Shattered Light was very ambitious for its time. It is a both single-player and multiplayer RPG-ish kind of thing. I say RPG-ish kind of thing because I haven't been able to really mess around with it much myself yet. So I couldn't tell you whether it's proper RPG or not, but it's in that vein. And being single-player and multiplayer circa 1999 is kind of ambitious considering what they were trying to do with it. You could either play it offline, of course, or you could hop online and play co-op with your friends, and it includes an editing utility that allows you to create your own worlds and campaigns and such. In other words, it was basically doing what Neverwinter Nights would do three years later. Uh, the Bioware Neverwinter Nights, of course, not the original Neverwinter Nights. The, that was a mud. But um, it was pretty ambitious for its time, which is impressive and also... A bit concerning, because ambitious for that era is, uh, it, it can get kind of messy. That said, it also had some tie-in novels, and the idea was that you could play the game, and you had the novels tying in with it. It was going to be a whole multimedia franchise, and it went nowhere. There is barely any information about this game online. What information you can find is... Some of the most bare-bones stuff you can imagine. It's really not helpful in determining whether the game's actually any good or not. And basically, nobody seems to have uh, really been able to figure out... This, this, even that this game exists, let alone being able to get it running on modern systems. I certainly could not get this running on a modern operating system at all. If it's 64-bit, it just doesn't run at all. So, what I was able to do is get it running in my Windows 98 virtual machine, which is what you're seeing right here. It turns out this is probably for the better, because of some, the, the main subject of this how-to-fail video. So, just to give you a quick rundown here, so you, you start the game up and you get this Shattered Light game logon. You enter your player name, you have a password that you can uh, set up for it, you select your save user information, and you can select single or multiplayer here. As far as I can tell, there is no multiplayer presence for this thing at all anymore. You cannot play this thing online, which is probably a good thing, for, again, for reasons that I'll explain here. So we're just going to boot the game up here just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with. And then it comes to the, the main menu here. You have your start button way down here for some baffling reason. I have Thorax already created, so we're just going to select them and click on Start. And as you can see, it's one of those weird games that has the interface split into multiple windows. It's kind of annoying, but that's just that was kind of a style at the time. But as you can see, you, you click to move, you can move around, you go over here and you talk to people. They can give you quests. Um, you, know, you got your hero sheet. I'm assuming these are all inventory slots. Got your stats. 
that's your inventory itself. I have a thousand gold pieces. Chat is not available in single player. And then there's uh, a, another stat screen on top of the the hero screen. Whatever. The point is, you get the idea of what the game is like. Um, and then we're just going to close it out. Uh, so let's say that you want to pull up your character information or transfer your saves to a different computer or something. So here we have the, the game folder. And this is where I found the problem. So um, you go into characters and you'll notice something about the save file there. Um, what does the file name say? It says your username and your password in plain text right next to each other. It's one of the dumbest things I've seen from a software security standpoint. Now, in this particular case, the only thing anybody would be able to do with this information is be able to play my characters in Shattered Light on this computer. Or not even on this computer, on this virtual machine specifically. This virtual machine has no internet access. You can't do anything with it. But imagine if somebody had used the same username and password that they used for anything else. If they had that, literally the only thing someone would have to do to get their login information is just go into this folder and look at the file name. Because everything before this 0.dat is the the username followed by their password. Oh, jeez. Hence me saying it's probably a good thing that you cannot play this game online anymore. Cybersecurity was just not really a thing back in the 90s. It wasn't anything people really thought much about. It didn't really become much of a thing until the early to mid 2000s. So something like this isn't completely unheard of in terms of really bad practices, but just seeing it in action after so long and having seen so many cybersecurity breaches over the years is just, it's painful. Developers, please do not do this. Uh, if you are making a game with any kind of online capabilities whatsoever do not store username and password anywhere in plain text definitely do not make it the file names for your freaking save files just just don't do it it's an incredibly terrible idea i'm not even a cybersecurity expert and i i can tell you that this is one of the worst ideas you can have for that sort of thing so just don't do this this is a a severe fail right there now, as for the game itself, I, I couldn't tell you whether it's actually any good or not yet because I haven't really messed around with it much yet. I will eventually make a, a proper video on it, a review, an MTO, something like that. But uh, suffice to say, <laughs> um, I'm not exactly surprised that Shattered Light didn't really go anywhere. But I'm also kind of glad it didn't because if it did, then there's a very good chance that a lot of people's information would have been compromised through it. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you all in later videos.